Well, it's been a few days since the release of the Astrolab from Autoria, and if you like your synths, I doubt you'll have been able to miss the reviews crashing into your feed over the past few days. So the marketing department did a great job of raising awareness of a new product. Let's face it, it was a bit of an Astro carpet bombing, and since then there's been loads of chatter about it, so I guess the marketing has really, really done its job. And as you'll realize, a few of us, well, a lot of us actually got the synth ahead of the release time. There's an embargo on that, and that means that you can't release anything until the very hour that it's released by their marketing department, or there's a press release out by their marketing department. And at that point, you'll get blitzed by a load of reviews. And the good thing about that is that it gives us plenty of time to get to know the instruments before the release. And also, probably more importantly, it means that you're not influenced in your video and your review about what other people think. But now the sort of moon dust has settled and I've taken a chance to look at what other people thought, read a few of the comments. I thought I'd put out this little opinion piece because it, people thought maybe differently than me. Uh, it's the, I don't really do opinion pieces. This is my first one, I think, but I think it's worth, worth coming back to it and reviewing the review. And mine was a few hours late because I spent Sunday night playing with it rather than editing the video. But those extra few hours were really invaluable because as it turns out, when I first got it, I had similar misgivings to lots of the comments that I've read or the negative comments that I've read. And that was that it really needs to have a bigger screen. It really needs to have access to the V collection in total. Uh, and you need to be able to edit stuff on the synth itself. And to be honest, I just didn't get it at first. And that's what I'm seeing reflected in a fair few comments. Although as it happens, when I went to cut and paste those comments into this video, uh, I realized they were by far in the minority, but we do really concentrate on the negatives, don't we? But apart from that, there's this 1970s retro space thermostat aesthetic that people don't seem to like, but I quite like it. I like the fact that it doesn't look like all the other synths I've got around me. So far, their brain activity is normal. So far. But at first, I really did struggle with similar thoughts to those people that sort of, I think, that don't get it. Uh, you know, what's the use case? Who's going to use this? And then I realized that just by coincidence, a few weeks ago, my friend's daughter was asking advice on what keyboard she, she should buy. And she, she's a good player, but she's never programmed a synth in her life. She hasn't got a studio. She just wants to go out with the band and have access to good quality sounds. Uh, and it just clicked she's the user she ended up going and buying a juno ds61 which is a mid-price roland and admittedly is half the price but this would definitely have been on her radar and that's when i realized that a lot of us might be in a professional programming and production bubble there's a lot of players out there that just want to play and just want to sound good so maybe that's who this is intended for if you need to go to rehearsal and change your tremolo amount on your on your roads or you need to do something different with one of the pads. This isn't for you. If you've got a musical director saying, we need this, we need that, can you change this, can you change that? Well, maybe not, but if you're just gigging with your mates, go around to your mates' houses or playing in a university band or whatever it is, if you've got the cash, I suppose, this, uh, this is possibly right up your street, but definitely not if you wanna go in and edit stuff to the nth degree live in front of people. And then what is it that professional players need that they haven't already got? Roland, for example, have got the Phantom range that covers just about everything, although you'll still need a cloud license to fully edit the tones. And Nord have got the Electro 61 at around the same price if you're just after those keyboard sounds. So maybe those professional gigging musicians just aren't the market. And the screen doesn't bother me. Even after loads of people pointed out it's like a thermostat, which somehow I hadn't noticed at all. But in use, it works just fine. It doesn't get smudgy as you tend to press the edge at the bottom of the screen. So sitting back and taking stock after all the fallout, I actually stand by everything I said. It's a great quality, playable synth with great quality sounds, but it's not perfect. Disaster, total disaster. But all that taken into consideration and all that forgotten, it was great being part of a bit of a, an online event, it feels, it's nice to be sent it, it's nice to be asked my point of view, it's nice to do a review, and you know, I, I actually like the quirky styling. I know people will think I'm mad for that, but I like that they've taken a little bit of a gamble, they've done something different, and it doesn't look like everything else in here. I know it's not gonna be for everyone, even after taking a step back and watching the fallout. 
And just to be clear, that's another reference to Space 1999 and the nuclear waste explosion that caused the moon to leave the Earth's orbit. So yeah, I stand by the thoughts. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it interesting, insightful, or useful. If you did, please think about subscribing, ring the bell, share, join me over on Patreon. This channel is funded by YouTube ads and my wonderful patrons. So if you head over to patreon.com slash Starsky car, you'll get access to patches and samples and other nice little goodies, all for less than the price of a non-fat double with macchiato per month. And also do check out my Starsky Core website. Again, there's patches, there's samples, the stuff you can buy, there's free stuff. But as I always say, it's nice for people to pick up even the cheaper bits of free stuff because it's nice to know people support the channel. Buy the $3 TR606 with distortion pack. Um, but anyway, um, thanks for staying to the very end and I'll see you next time.